Good afternoon. I'm Evan Alakuban, a general surgery resident at the University of Southern California. I'd like to thank the moderators and the program for allowing us the opportunity to present our work on the regression of intestinal metaplasia following magnetic sphincter augmentation device placement. I have nothing to disclose, and Dr. Lippum and Dr. Biltzakevich are both paid consultants for Torax Medical. Intestinal metaplasia, also known as Barrett's esophagus, represents a mucosal transformation due to, the, due to having uncontrolled reflux of gastric contents. This is a precancerous lesion with a well-documented risk of progression to dysplasia and carcinoma. Long-term studies have shown regression of disease following anti-reflux surgery, with one publication from our institution showing a regression rate of 30% at five years. Data for the longest term follow-up have actually shown regression in 41% of patients at 12 years after fundoplication. As an alternative to fundoplication, the magnetic sphincter augmentation system, or LINCS device, places a series of interconnected magnetic beads around the lower esophageal sphincter to create this reflux barrier. As shown in this image, as a food bolus passes, the intraluminal pressure causes the device to open, allowing passage of this food bolus, and the magnetic attraction of the beads returns the device back to the original position, reestablishing this reflux barrier. As a result of the initial clinical trial, we now, we now know that this device is effective at controlling reflux symptoms, taking patients off PPIs, and curing esophagitis at five years. Importantly, some of the initial inclusion criteria included patients with large hiatal hernias, severe esophagitis, BMI greater than 35, and Barrett's esophagus. So efficacy in these patient groups were initially unknown. While reports have emerged that this device can be effective in some of these groups, the effect on Barrett's esophagus is still unknown. And so therefore, the aim of our study was to examine regression rates of intestinal metaplasia after magnetic sphincter augmentation device placement for GERD. We retrospectively reviewed all patients who underwent device placement between April 2007, which would have been part of the initial clinical trial, through November 2017. From this, we identified the first patient with intestinal metaplasia who had the device placed was in 2012. All patients underwent preoperative endoscopic evaluation. We recorded and categorized these findings into segment length categories defined as ultra short segment as normal mucosa with no visible segment, short segment disease as between one and three centimeters in length, and long segment disease as greater than or equal to three centimeters. If a patient had a suspicious area identified on endoscopy, the entire segment was biopsied according to Seattle protocol. In order to be categorized as having intestinal metaplasia, the patient needed to have, on pathologic examination, columnar mucosa with the presence of goblet cells. From 443 patients reviewed, we identified 86 patients that had non-dysplastic, biopsy-proven, preoperative Barrett's esophagus. There were 30 females and 56 males with a mean age of 58 and a mean BMI of 27.3. Also found on endoscopic evaluation were 27 patients with esophagitis and 68 patients with a hiatal hernia. 36 of these patients had a hiatal hernia size between three and five centimeters, and 11 of the patients had a hiatal hernia size greater than five centimeters. Most importantly, 35 patients were identified as having ultra short segment disease, 37 with short segment disease, and 14 with long segment disease. The mean operative time was 66 minutes, and most of the patients went home on the day of surgery. There were no major perioperative complications. At follow-up, <clears throat> 67 of 86 patients, or 78%, had completed post-operative endoscopic follow-up with a median follow-up of 1.2 years. Of these 67 patients, 48 no longer had intestinal metaplasia on biopsy, corresponding to an overall regression rate of 71.6%. Most importantly, no patient had progression to dysplasia or carcinoma. 47 of the patients had completed post-op pH testing. The median Demeester score improved from 35.3 pre-op to 9.2 post-op. The importance of acid suppression is illustrated here in this table, where patients with abnormal post-operative Demeester scores were like, more likely to still have intestinal metaplasia 
and therefore less likely to have regression of disease. When comparing groups by segment length, patients with ultra short segment disease were most likely to have regression of disease and next followed by short segment. Patient with long segment disease were unlikely to have regression of disease and in fact, those two patients that did have regression of disease both had segment lengths of three centimeters. To address the possibility of sampling error, we sought to calculate a regression rate of patients only having multiple endoscopies. From this, we identified 17 patients that had two endoscopies, 13 patients with three, and four with four or more postoperative endoscopies. In total, this was 34 patients with more than one postoperative endoscopy. From these 34 patients, nine of the patients still had Barrett's and 25 did not, corresponding to a regression rate of 73.5%. This was similar to our overall regression rate of 71.6%. Therefore, in conclusion, magnetic sphincter augmentation was effective in achieving regression of intestinal metaplasia with an overall regression rate of 72% at one year. Effective acid suppression was important for disease regression and long segment disease was unlikely to regress. However, longer term follow-up is required to make a meaningful comparison with results following from the application. Thank you. Thank you.